In this video, I will review the MLA guidelines for correctly formatting a literary analysis essay on Google Docs. First, I need to have one inch margins all around. Thankfully, Google Docs takes care of that automatically, but you can check the margins by going to the File tab and selecting Page Setup. You will notice that the orientation of the page is portrait and the margins are one inch all around. Next, I make my font type Times New Roman and choose size 12. Now I'm going to write my name. Before I write anything else, however, I'm going to update my normal text to match this style. This just means that the default format and font will remain Times 12 New Roman. If I accidentally skip a line, Google won't revert the text style back to Arial. Although this may seem inconsequential, not having to make unnecessary and avoidable edits while you write will help you in the long run. Writing itself can be frustrating enough. You don't need formatting issues to go along with it. After adjusting my font type and size, I adjust the spacing by selecting the line space icon and choosing double space. With my text and spacing set, I'm going to write my header in the top left corner of the page. After each element, I will hit enter so that the four elements of the header have a double space between them. The elements of the header are full name, first followed by last, the name of your teacher or professor, the title or course number of your class, and lastly, the date your essay or paper is submitted. Now that I have the rest of my header completed, I can work on formatting my title. I hit enter once and change the alignment of this line of text. Alignment just means which side of the paper your writing will start from, either left, right, or center. The title is aligned to the center, so I go to the alignment icon and select center align. I can also use keyboard shortcuts by pressing command or control plus shift plus E. This will center the alignment. After writing my title, I press enter once again and begin writing my essay on the next line. The alignment needs to be changed back so that my writing begins on the left side of the page. I can either go to the lines icon again and select left align, or I can press command plus shift plus L. I find the keyboard shortcuts to be a great time saver, but it comes down to personal preference. The first line of each paragraph is indented. To indent, all you have to do is press tab. The lines that follow will automatically continue at the left alignment. In addition to the header on the first page, there's also an MLA formatting requirement called the running header, which consists of your last name and the page number. This header is placed, as the name suggests, in the header, which is the space above the top margin. The space below the bottom margin is the footer. To create the running header, you double-click the space above the top margin. The alignment of your running header needs to be changed from left alignment to right alignment. To do this, I can either select the alignment icon and select right align, or use the keyboard shortcut Command plus Shift plus R. Before I write anything, I select Options and choose Page Numbers. From there, I can select Show on First Page or leave it unchecked. Leaving the Show on First Page box unchecked just means the page number will not appear on the first page. This is a matter of personal preference for your teacher or professor. Whether or not you choose different first page, both formats are acceptable. Do not change the numbering. It is always set at 1. Once the page number appears in the top right corner, I add my last name. Notice how the font of the running header is the same as the rest of the document, size 12 times New Roman. There is no punctuation between the last name and the page number. I check the box Different First Page, which ensures that the running header does not appear on the first page. Again, this is personal preference. 
Once I input this information into the header, Google Docs will automatically replicate the running header on each page. Lastly, I need to format my Works Cited page. This is the last page of the essay, which lists the work cited in the essay and provides the following information. The author's name, the title of the text, the publisher, and the publication date. Formatting this information isn't as straightforward as typing it out in that order, however. To be correctly formatted to the MLA guidelines, I need to follow a specific pattern. Before I work on citing my source, I need to label the page as Works Cited. Since this is a title, it has to be centered aligned. Just as I did when I began the essay, I press Control plus Shift plus E, which automatically centers my writing. After typing Works Cited, I press Enter, followed by Control plus Shift plus L, which automatically aligns my writing to the left. The format of the information required is as follows. Last name of the author, comma, first name of the author, period, title of the work, in italics for a full-length work of literature, period, publishing company, comma, date published. While you can write this out manually, there are also websites that will automatically generate the correct citation after you have input the necessary information. The website that I use is Nightsite through Calvin University. You simply select your citation style, MLA, resource type, book, and input the necessary and relevant information, author's name, book title, publisher, and year publish. From there, you copy your completed citation and paste it in your document. Here is the completed work cited page. Hopefully this was helpful and informative. If you have any questions or suggestions, please share them in the comments section below. And for information about embedding and citing sources in the body of an essay, please refer to my video, Embedding and Citing Evidence. Thank you and happy writing.